Okay, so today we're going to learn about coin problems. Now, coin problems are pretty simple, but we often allow the question and the problem confuse us and get us to write the equation the wrong way. So I've given you two major points right here. So the first major point is when you're looking at your problem, you want to look to see if the total you're given in the problem is the total number of coins or the total amount of money. Don't let this question sway the way you write your equation. It all depends on this total. Once you solve the equation, you can then use that answer to answer the question that's being asked. So this is important, okay? Whether or not what's given in the problem, the total number of coins or the total amount of money, that is going to depend on how you write your equation for the problem. Okay. The other thing that people mess up on this is if for some reason I need to assign value for a coin, a nickel is worth five cents, but you have to remember that a nickel is written 0.05. A dime would be written as 0.10, right? Because if I've got like five dollars and ten cents, you're gonna write 5.10, right? If I've got twenty-five dollars and five cents, I'm gonna write twenty-five point zero five right? So if you don't like working with decimals, it is possible to write five cents, ten cents, but then you have to remember that the total amount that you're given in the problem, be it like eight dollars and twenty-five cents, you have to write that as eight hundred and twenty-five cents. So basically you can work with cents if you don't want to work with dollars. You just have to remember to multiply everything by a hundred, which means you're moving the decimal point two places to the right. So let's go ahead and talk about a couple of these before... Um, and then hopefully everything I just said will start to make sense. So starting off with in your pocket, you have dimes and quarters. You have three more quarters and twice the number of dimes. And then I've bolded here, you have 18 coins altogether. That's important for your equation. How many of each coin do you have? This question right here, don't worry about it until the very end. Let's talk about what we have. We have dimes and quarters. And what I have here is not how many dimes or how much money I have in dimes and quarters. What I have here is just number of dimes and number of quarters. So my labels are going to be number of dimes and number of quarters. And then I have a comparison statement here. So this sentence right here, you have three more quarters than twice the number of dimes. So quarters is being compared to dimes. So I don't know what dimes is. So dimes, I'm going to go ahead and call that D. You could call it X, but I like to call it D for dimes, right? And then quarters is being compared to dimes. So I have three more quarters than twice the number of dimes. More quarters means I have plus twice dimes means two times dimes. So the number of quarters is going to be written as 2D plus 3. You could write it as 3 plus 2D, but whenever you have that word than, that usually means, and it always means, that this is happening to the stuff that comes after. It doesn't matter with addition, but it does with subtraction. So now, <clears throat> your total. Let's go ahead for my labels and write the total. The total that I have is 18 coins. So you really have to understand what your labels mean here. D is standing for how many dimes you actually have in your pocket, right? Like do you have five dimes, do you have eight dimes, do you have ten dimes, right? And quarters is how many actual quarters you have in your pocket, right? You have twice the number of dimes plus three for quarters, right? So this expression tells you how many quarters, not how much money you have, right? So since you know you have 18 coins, well, all I have to do is take the number of dimes I have in my pocket plus the number of quarters, and that's gonna equal 18. So my equation here is very simple. It is simply D plus 2D plus three equals 18. So then now I'm gonna just simply solve this equation. So Combine your like terms, D plus 2D gives me 3D plus 3 equals 18, and then I'm going to solve for D. So I subtract 3 from both sides, and I'm going to get 3D is equal to 15. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 3, and I'm going to get that D is equal to 5. Now, D, what does D stand for? Well, D stands for the number of dimes I have. This means I have five dimes. It does not mean I have five dollars in dimes. It means that I have five dimes. And then 
quarters would be 2 times 5 plus 3, right? So the question, how many of each coin do I have? Well, right here I can just go ahead and write that I have 5 dimes. Actually, I'll write it down at the bottom. I have 5 dimes. And then quarters would be 2 times 5, which is 10, plus 3 is 13. 13 quarters. Now, if the question, that's my answer, if the question had asked me how much money I had, well then I would have to figure out, well, I have 50 cents in dimes then, right? Because I have 5 dimes times 10, and then 13 quarters, you'd multiply by 25 to get that, and then you'd figure out how much money you had. So the question, you can't answer the question until you've completely set up the problem. Let's go ahead and try one more. Okay, so this one looks like the same problem. It says, in your pocket, you have dimes and quarters. You have three more quarters and twice the number of dimes. That's the same beginning as the last one, except now I say you have $3.75 altogether. How many of each coin do you have? So question, don't care about it until I've set up my labels in my equation. So my labels for dimes and quarters is going to be the same, right? So the number of dimes, again, is going to be called D, and the number of quarters is going to be called 2D plus 3. But now my total, my total is not in the number of coins. My total is in money, $3.75, right? So in this case, it does not make sense for me to do D plus 2D plus 3 equals 375 because D does not stand for how much money I have in dimes. It stands for how many dimes that I have. So you have to think about, well, if dimes was 5, was if I had five dimes, then I'd multiply that by 10 cents, right? Dimes are worth 10 cents. So you're going to take the amount of dimes that you have, which you don't know in this case, it's D. You're going to do 0.10D plus, now quarters is this expression. This is how many quarters you actually have in your hand, 2D plus 3. We don't actually know what that is. We won't know what that is until we find D, but we do know that quarters are worth 25 cents. And if you knew how many quarters you had, you would multiply that by 25 cents to get how much money you had, right? So in this case, now you're going to do 0.25 and then in parentheses, 2D plus 3 is equal to my total, which is $3.75. So now, I personally do not like dealing with problems with decimals, so you can get rid of the decimals. So your other option for your equation, you could do 10D plus 25, in parentheses, 2D plus 3, equals 375. So the tricky part about this is if you remove the decimals, from these numbers, you have to remove the decimals from your total. So now everything is in cents, right? If you forget to move the decimal, you're gonna get the wrong answer. So now, let's distribute the 25 to solve the equation. So I'm gonna get 10D plus 50D plus 75 equals 375. Combine your like terms, 10D and 50D give me 60D plus 75 equals 375. Now isolate the variable, so subtract 75 from both sides, and you get 60D is equal to 300. Then divide both sides by 60, and when you divide both sides by 60, it's really kind of the same as 30 divided by 6 because you can cross out those zeros and you get that D is equal to 5, okay? So we got the same answer that we got the last time, but we had a different problem. We were given the total, right? So how many of each coin do you have? Well, you just go up here and you say, okay, I've got 5 dimes, and I've got 5 times 2 plus 3 um, quarters, which is going to give me 13 quarters. So again, same answer, 5 dimes, 13 quarters, but we got there a different way. All right, let's do a few more. All right, next question. In Alexa's purse, she has 12 coins, and they are all nickels and dimes. There are four fewer nickels than dimes. How much money does she have? So the question, how much money does she have? We can't answer that 
until we use the information we have up here to come up with my labels and my equation. Then I solve the equation, then I can answer the question. So, right at the very beginning, we know she's got 12 coins. So, we know that the total in the problem we're talking about is 12 coins. So, my total, 12 coins. That number right there is going to tell me how to set up my equation. Because it's in coins, I'm not going to have to assign value to my equation. So now the next part, there are four fewer nickels than dimes. So we've got the number of nickels and the number of dimes. And it says that there are four fewer nickels than dimes. So nickels is being compared to dimes. So dimes, again, I'm just going to go ahead and call that D. And the number of nickels is just going to be D minus 4, because there are four fewer nickels than dimes. So now my equation, since my total is in coins, my equation, all I have to do is add up the D minus 4 plus D, and I'm going to say that equals 12. You just add that up. So combine your like terms. D plus D is 2D. 2D minus 4 equals 12. Then get D alone. You're going to add 4 to both sides. You're going to get 2D is equal to 16. Then you're going to divide by 2, and you're going to get D is equal to 8. Okay, so now I've got that D is equal to 8. Well, let's go back and read the question. How much money does she have? Well, we're not going to say that she's got $8, right? D stands for the number of dimes she has. So she has 8 dimes. How many nickels does she have? She has four nickels because we're going eight minus four. The question, how much money does she have? Well, think about nickels. Nickels are five cents. So I'm going to multiply four by five cents, right? And then I'm going to add that to dimes. Well, dimes are worth 10 cents. So I'm going to multiply 10 cents by eight, right? So this right here gives me how much money she has in nickels. Well, five cents times four is 20 cents. And 10 cents times 8 is going to give me how much money she has in dimes. Well, that's 80 cents. And then 20 cents and 80 cents, well, that's a dollar. So the answer to the question, how much money does she has, have? Well, she has a dollar. And she's got a dollar when with 8 coins or 8 dimes and 4 nickels. And if you add that together, you get that she has 12 coins. So that's one way to check, right? She's got 12 coins, so these numbers are right, but then the question is how much money does she have? So then you have to go and you have to actually calculate how much money she has. All right, so this last question, there are, there's actually two good ways that you can set up your labels for this. I'm going to encourage you to stop the video and see if you can come up with your labels and your equation without me. If you can't, stay tuned in. I'm going to give you both ways. So we have two ways that we can write our labels. One is going to have a fraction. One label will not have a fraction. And you pick the one that makes the most sense to you. And that's what we're going to use. So to start off, we're going to start off, first of all, I just wrote number of pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. Our total is $1.21. This right here is important because that means that when I write my equation, I'm going to have to assign value to all of these expressions. So let's start off. There are half as many nickels as pennies. So if you're taking this very literally, nickels is being compared to pennies. So pennies, I could call pennies P and nickels is going to be one half p. So it's one way to think about is everything's being compared to pennies. So then the second one says there are two more dimes than nickels. So dimes, there are two more than nickels. Well, since nickels is one half p, dimes is going to be one half p plus two. And then the last sentence, there are four less quarters than pennies. So four less quarters than pennies would be P minus four. So now that would be if you compare everything to pennies. Now, one way to think about this is to compare everything to nickels. So the very first sentence is saying that there are half as many nickels as pennies. So just think about this for a second. The number of nickels has to be half the number of pennies. So we could say if I don't know what nickels are, 
then pennies has to be 2n. Now think about that. Isn't n half of 2n? So that's one way to look at it. All right. And then from there, you've got two more dimes than nickels. So you're just going to take the number of nickels and add two. So the number of nickels is n now. So it's n plus two. And then quarters is for less than pennies. Well, pennies in this scenario we called 2n. So it would be 2n minus 4. All right? So your total here is $1.21. Now, you do not have to write down both of these. You just have to understand one of them, right? So now, since my total is $1.21, what I'm going to do is I have to multiply whatever expression you use here by 1 cent, whatever you use here by 5 cents, whatever you use for dimes by 10 cents, whatever you used for quarters by 25 cents. All right, so I like this because I like not having fractions in my problem. So my total is $1.21, so I'm going to convert that to 121 cents. So keep that in mind. All right, so now you have to kind of write small when you write your equation. I'm going to draw a line here. And write kind of small so you can fit that whole equation in. I'm going to use this part, these expressions right here. So I'm going to do 1 times 2n, which is just 2n because of 1 cent. Nickels, I'm going to say, is 5 times n, right? Because n is nickels or n, 5n. And then n plus 2, well, that's dimes. So I'm going to do 10. And then in parentheses, I have to do n plus 2. Don't forget those in parentheses. They're important because you got to figure out how many dimes you have before you multiply it by 10, right? So then for quarters, quarters are 25 cents. So I'm going to say 25 and then in parentheses, 2n minus 4, and now that equals not 1.21, but 121. All right, so you could have written your equation 0 0.01 times 2n, 0 0.05 times 5, uh, 0 0.05 times n. You could have made this 0 0.10 times n plus 2. You could have made this 0 0.25 times 2n minus 4, and you could have left that just as 1.21. But if you do that, then you've got all these decimals. So you have to remember if you're taking the decimals out of 1 cent, 5 cents, 10 cents, 25 cents, you have to do the same thing here. So now, if you notice, this one just wants the labels and the equation. So I'm going to stop. I'm not actually going to solve this equation. But I will tell you, if you used these as your labels, this is what your equation would look like. It would look like it would be 1 times p, which is just p. You could put the 1 in front there if you want, plus 5 times 1 half p. And so if you were solving this, you would just do 5 times a half, which is 2.5, right? Make that 2.5p when you're solving it. And then plus 10, and then in parentheses, you'd have 1 half p plus 2 plus quarters would be p minus 4, so it would be 25, and then in parentheses, p minus 4 equals 121. And again, we're not going to solve these because well, I'm trying to save some time, but just to think about it, if we were to solve it, notice this one, we would be solving for the number of nickels, and that would be n. So since the question is how many dimes does she have, well, if we found out what n was, then we would just do that plus 2 to get dimes. If I am solving the second equation here, notice my loan variable is pennies. So you get a different answer here, but you'd be getting the pennies value. And so then the pennies, to get the dimes, you would just do 1 half times whatever amount of pennies you got plus 2. These answers will all end up being the same. It's just you're solving for different variables in two different equations you only have to know how to do one. All right, that's all I have for you today. Good luck on your homework and practice on this.